you better not return my book. It's amazing. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about setting your book as returnable in Ingram Spark. Should you do it? Should you not do it? What are the costs associated with it? What strategy does this play into? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things self-publishing with you. Before I get into the details about today's topic, don't forget to hit subscribe. That way you'll be notified every week when I put out new videos on self-publishing, making a career of being an author, and now being a mompreneur. So I see this question a lot from authors who are using Ingram Spark or hear them say that they just can't afford to list their book as returnable on Ingram Spark. Um, so I'm actually going to go over why you would do this, why you would set your book as returnable on Ingram Spark, how you do this, and what I actually do for my book strategy. One of the biggest benefits to self-publishing your print books through Ingram Spark is that you can set them as returnable. The primary reason to make your book returnable in Ingram Spark is that brick and mortar stores want to see this when they go to order your books. So I go into detail more on this in my new book, Going Wide, Self-Publishing Your Books Outside the Amazon Ecosystem. So basically, bookstores don't wanna order 20 copies of your book and then get stuck with them if they aren't moving. They have limited room on their physical shelves and in their storeroom, right? If it isn't selling, they want to know they can return the books and get their money back. So the way you make this election in Ingram Spark is really easy, and I'm going to show you that right now. All right, so we're on the pricing page. So this is after the title setup page. So this is the print information page, has all the pricing details. Now, um, I just did a video about doing the wholesale discount. So now we're gonna look at returnability. Um, and I'm gonna link that wholesale discount video up top so you can watch that. But the next item you fill in after the wholesale discount is returnability. So as you can see, I have to enter this. I can't just leave it blank. Um, and so for the United States and Canada, I have three options. No, not returnable. Yes, returnable and delivered me or yes returnable but destroy the book um, in the other regions i only have the option of no not deliverable or yes return it but destroy it so i do yes return in the us and canada where that's available um, and that way the bookstore can deliver it back to ingram spark and they could send it out again now likely if a book is being returned it's probably been damaged hence that person is returning it i don't really know people who are buying books reading them and then returning them and dealing with the hassle of shipping like if they wanted a free book they could just go to a library chances are if it's being returned there's some kind of damage to it um so i could select yes destroy which gives the bookstore the option to send it back but it means i'm still out the cost of the book one way or another and there's absolutely no option to resell now for the other territories that's my only option but i do want my book to be returnable so i'm going to select that as i go through all right, my other option is I could select no for all of these, which means the retailers could still order my book and sell it through their website or their store, but they know going in that I would not be accepting any return. So I always set this to yes. Okay, so I mentioned cost there. So yes, if a store returns my book, Ingram Spark is going to have to apply that credit to them back that refund to the store somewhere. So let's go through an example. Let's say my paperback book costs $5 to print and the retail price is $15, okay? My local bookstore ordered 20 copies at the 50% wholesale discount, just for easy math. They paid $150 for those 20 books. Before shipping, that book order cost $100 to produce. So I make $50 from this transaction. Let's say that after two months, the store has sold half their copies, but it's really slow going. They want to return the other 10 books at the rate they paid, so the $7.50 per book. That means they want $75 back from Ingram Spark. Who then passes that cost along to me? But I only made $50 off the transaction. Again, ignoring for shipping costs for really easy math. So, oops, that means I'm in the red $25. So I see a lot of authors get caught up with this potential issue, right? Nobody wants to be losing money on their, their business as an author. So the books have already been printed. That's a sunk cost now. So yes, Ingram Spark could send those out the next time an order comes in for another retailer, but they aren't going to stock these books forever and just waiting for a sale to come in on them, right? Like, they're not in the business of warehousing my books. They're in the business of print on demand. Now, if I upgraded to a different level of service like Ingram Publishing Solutions or Ingram Publisher Services, um, IPS, they would do that. But for Ingram Spark, they don't. So for this reason, I see a lot of authors panic that they just can't afford to make their books returnable. 
As you saw from the screen capture that I just showed you, I make all of my books returnable. So am I just rolling in royalties or just plain stupid? Neither. So for me, it's a calculated risk, but I've never had an issue of returns outnumbering my sales. Ever. Ever. For starters, I was very actively pursuing a brick and mortar strategy for my books in early 2020. Well, we all know what happened next. I'm not actively pursuing bookstores to stock my book at this time, which means I'm not getting 20, 30, 50, 100 book orders to fill right now from these stores. If they are making that order, it's because the demand is being generated outside of my direct efforts. And if you aren't trying to get bookstores to buy large quantities from you actively, this isn't a concern. Secondly, if those big orders were placed, then that's kind of a problem I would want to have. I'm planning to pursue a brick and mortar strategy again as more stores are opening back up. But in the meantime, I don't like fiddling with my metadata. I have all my books set as returnable for this reason, right? Um, it looks appealing to bookstores if and when I'm ready to go back and pursue that strategy again. So I hope this answered your questions on whether you should make your book returnable on Ingram Spark or not and how to do it. Um, if you have more questions about um, certain settings in Ingram Spark, pricing strategy, brick and mortar strategy, please let me know in the comments below. We'll keep the conversation going. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. That lets YouTube know that you're finding value from this information and can get it in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book. Hey, if you want to continue to support this channel and my other creative work, please head over to buymeacoffee.com and support my channel. You can buy me one coffee, three, five, ten, or you can even get a membership. Those who are in the membership are actually going to be included in the acknowledgments pages of all of my published books moving forward as a big thank you. And you can even get some additional options to get an Instagram thank you post shout out or a shout out in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel.